association culture has been significant. And uh, most of all, uh, the impact that the industry has had in our foreign direct investment over the past um, 12 years has been quite significant. So I think uh, we can say without a doubt that's been all good. Now, what do you make of the uh, complaints about the quality of service? Those are part of the challenges that will come out of uh, growth. I would say they are byproduct of growth and development. Uh, again, uh, in the early days, it wasn't about, it wasn't about quality of service, but it was about availability of services in the early days. Uh, but today, you have seen that the challenges that we have are, are addressable to capacity. Um, sometimes traceable, um, traceable to um, interference by government agency, uh, or willful damage on our infrastructure, and uh, all of these have had uh, some significant impact on the ability of service providers to provide uninterrupted services. Well, I think they are all part of growth, and all part of the elements uh, that you would expect uh, in, a, in, a, in a growing industry. And also, um, we must remember that telecoms is a technology industry. Mm -hmm. Technology is changing uh, by the day. Uh, and it's a race, it's a race not just for uh, quality of service, it's a race for innovation, it's a race for new development, mm -hmm. and it's a race uh, for competition, where today new solutions are released to the market and others are already looking for what next and where next to go. So for us as service providers, it's a question of uh, you invest, you have to reinvest. You invest, you have to reinvest. Otherwise, in no time, you will become a, a back player if, if, you are not, if you are not tuning yourself one form or the other to rapid changes in technology. So these are part of the challenges that, that we face. Then with our social environment, where, as we know, we have to provide a number of services for ourselves. So instead of focusing on the core business and the core trade of telecoms, we have to go the ancillary services such as provision of security, provision of power infrastructure and the rest of them. And whether we like it or not, all of these um, do have significant impact on ability to provide and our services. But the, uh, if, when you look at all this, not only that our operators are not proactive, doing fully well the, the, the kind of surge they should be expecting from Nigeria. Uh, Nigerians, because um, the issue of quality of service have consistently been there, and it seems instead of even improving, is like getting worse. And NCC cannot continuously uh, find operators for quality of service, because just like in, in Richard now, so there are some existing problems. You see, it's a combination of many things. The operators cannot be the cannot do be the be all and do all. We can't be the all and the do all. We can't. Uh, and so, our operations are dependent on certain variables, variables of regulation, variables of support of of, uh, of uh, policies, and variables of our social culture environment. And it depends on the point of impact. Um, where you have issues of multiple regulation, for example, mm -hmm. uh, operators have no control over such. And it means that one agency of government is trying to enforce a rule in a certain way, another one is trying to enforce it. And they are both right in their own ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the interpretation of the act that establishes them. And the operators are victims of this controversy. Um, number two, issues of damage to infrastructure. There are variables that are not in the control of operators. So even where you build the most resilient infrastructure and you are open to third party that they will for and unwillful that they you have no control over such. The question is what uh, what amount of remedial energy efforts can you make when you have failure? And the kind of country that we have where you can you can do certain things after certain hours of the day. Uh, it's, it's a problem. In other parts of the world you can do maintenance around the clock. Most part of the country today is, is unsafe to be out at seven PM to be out in the evening. And so it means if you have failure at seven o'clock and it's significant failure on the network, you can't you can't remedy that you can't cure that you can't remedy that all of them you can't cure that you can't restore the service mm -hmm. until twelve hours later. And these are the issues. So if you say that 
Does it mean we are not proactive enough? Does it mean we don't know, we don't see that these things will happen? Yes, to the extent that we know, to the extent that we can foresee, to the extent that we can plan. This is possible. But where you can't, what you don't know, you don't know. What you don't know, you can't act against it. I wouldn't know that there will be fire, fiber cut or Lagos by the Express at midnight. If it does happen at midnight, I would know that yes, there is fiber cut which has disconnected the major part of the country at midnight. But I can't do anything at 7 o'clock in the morning. Because that is the safest time at which I can send workmen to cycle the stock service. The other thing is that if government is granting an eroding contract, and granting contract for roadworks and road construction, and there is no protection for the infrastructure that exists on the road. It's pretty tough for the service providers. So it means I have got to procure right away from the government. Same government has approved now road contract uh, for if, for rehabilitation of the road. There's no protection for my infrastructure that is there. And I'm left to the whims and caprices of the contractor who determines and decides that what he wants to do and how he wants to do. It has impact on my service for my quality of service. At the end of the day, the one who will feel it most are the subscribers. So these are all the issues and the variables. So it's not to say it's a problem of capacity. It's not to say it's a problem of non-readiness to make things work or not be proactive enough. This is a problem of combination of many things. It's a policy thing, it's a regulation thing, it's an environmental thing, and all of these variables, whether we are like it or not, they affect service quality. Well, what are you doing with the Lagos State government? I understand they have been uh, somewhat uh, selling off some of the mass of your members. We are in discussion with them, and uh, we are hopeful that uh, over the next couple of weeks, we should come to some resolution about the way forward. I can assure that we are in discussion with the Lagos State government. We've had uh, quite, quite uh, encouraging uh, meetings, and uh, I hope that over the next couple of weeks, we should be able to resolve all the gray areas, the issues of approval, the process of approval, as well as rates for approval in the state. And we hope that by extension, that will also assist us with some of the issues that we have in some other part of the country, in some other states. In the past, yeah, your association won some uh, mega battle with the Lagos State government. And the one we think that uh, most of the issues must have been resolved with that kind of uh, legal uh, uh, battle. Why is it reoccurring or things relatively to that reoccurring and all that? Yeah, I think the issues that we are dealing with today is a bit different from issues that, uh, that was, it was the issues around the judgment of the court. Okay. I think they are a bit different. Uh, but where we have commonality, we are referring to the court judgment. Uh, where we don't have commonality, uh, we are taking those issues um, as independent and we are taking them as as, uh, as on their own, on their own as independent as separate issues. Mm. Um, but the important thing is that parties are discussing and the parties are hopeful that issues will be will be resolved. Uh, result in the best in terms of court. You were at the National Council on uh, Communication Technology Meeting. Yeah. Earlier that could. Uh, after the deliberation, what was the thing? Home from it was a good meeting. how thing we had in Akure. It was really nice and I was very impressed at the caliber of people that came. Uh, we had commissioners for ICT or information from many states of the and uh, this, I will say, are the stakeholders in their own right. Because part of the issues we have, particularly at the local level and the state level, about multiplicity of parties and regulation has impacted significantly on, uh, on the quality of services. Uh, but at that meeting, we could bring a number of issues to bear. And the resolution of the council, in my view, as a member of that council, will help in no small regard in moving things forward particularly as it affects issues of taxes and levies, regulations at the state level. I commend the Honorable Minister for the job well done. Uh, because looking at the spirit of the meeting and the quality of discussion that we had at that meeting, I think that she's done quite well to have been able to bring those very important people together to agree on the common issues affecting the industry. So uh, it was a good meeting. that other other agencies of government will emulate this idea, uh, this this style of leadership of the Ministry of uh, Information and Technology, Communication Technology. Because that way it provides what I would call an all-inclusive environment for everybody uh, at every tier of government. Because part of the issues that we have had, I think the disconnect 
team in Mayor One of government, federal, state, and the local government. But now this kind of council brings everyone together and we all can rub minds about issues that are of different interests but that are of common impact. Mm -hmm. Issues that are of common impact but of different interests. And uh, going forward, I think that the, this council will assist in most more way in resolving a number of issues that have become that have become sad. Okay. Um, recently, as part of the uh, commemoration of uh, Jason in Nigeria, the session of uh, an NGO, NATCOMS, requested that operators pay some compensation to them, generally uh, some 5,000. And um, I would like to know what's your view on that. Because I think well, I think the letter was even addressed to you, I probably copy you others on behalf of the operators. What is that doing? It will appear that uh, that organization is losing its focus. It will appear that they are they appear unaware about the reality of the industry where we operate. Uh, because some of the advocacies they have been involved in in recent past, the spirit of that letter is in contrast to their spirit of uh, advocacy. Uh, they've also called for compensation for operators. They've called for removal of issues of multiplicity of regulation and taxes and all that. If they are aware that those problems are there, what is the basis for asking for compensation on behalf of someone or uh, on behalf of their members? So, so the appeal to us as if the, the, the organization is losing its focus. Uh, and we know that it's a form uh, request. Uh, we received that and our association is looking at it and at the appropriate time we provide a response to them. Uh, but in Ghana, but in Ghana, have, in Ghana there, was, there was a compensation like that. But also in Nigeria, there has been compensation in times past. There has been compensation in times past. Operators are courageous of servants in times past. But we do not expect that an agency, an organization, association like theirs, who tend, who appear to understand the issues and challenges of the industry, will come to speak from the other side of the mouth and now acting as if they are not aware about the issues leading to. Uh, circumstances of their request. So um, at this time, I, I can't say much on it. It's an issue that we received, and now I spoke. Okay. Um, generally, what uh, would you like to share with us on the industry? I think it's a lot of work in progress. We are not yet there. The industry is not fully built. We are still having to do a lot in terms of infrastructure rollout. We are doing a lot in terms of upgrade and public and the public should come to bear with us. Um, we haven't come to a point where we can say well, now we're there. So it's still a lot of work in progress. And uh, the source, cons consumers are the reason why we're here. No operator wants to provide poor quality service. Uh, but at different times, we are faced with different problems which often affect our ability to provide good quality service. But I, I do believe that the more we are together, the more we understand one another, the more we understand the problems of our industry. Uh, better it will be for all of us. And then the more we will be able to absorb and accept um, the issues that, that are today impacting on our ability to have the uh, uninterrupted service. So um, I'm not making excuses for the challenges that we have. But I'm only saying that it's a lot of work in progress. And the more we understand that we are not yet there, all right, lastly, when is the uh, out on transiting? How do you mean? Transiting uh, in terms of leadership. Oh, we, we are working on it. The, the council is working, the association is working something out. And at the appropriate time, uh, our expo will make, uh, will make a public announcement to that. I've also been here for a while. Uh, I really look forward to this transition when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> somebody asked me.